Hello and welcome to Money Tips. This is Charles Kelly bringing you Money Tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Thanks for tuning in on Facebook Live and on my uh, podcast which you can find on iTunes and Stitcher among other places. I uh, hope you're all having a good week. Uh, I, this is the time of the week where I give you a sort of roundup of, of the stories that I've gone through this week and uh, talk about some other things that are happening in the news as well. I started off the week by talking about some important news for landlords and investors and th- you might want to look back on that uh, on, on Monday's broadcast where we talked about the abolition of Section 21 no-fault evictions which could cause problems for landlords and it should be something you might, you might want to look at as an investor, landlord and of course a tenant. Then we talked about the banks who are charging 40% now for overdrafts um, and this includes authorised un- and unauthorised overdrafts, 50 times the, the base rate at the moment of 0.75 and certainly something like 25 times the, the, the rate that banks can borrow between them, the, the LIBOR or the interbank rate, which actually the regulator wants them to get rid of uh, as it happens. But uh, the now I've talked to some people in the banks about this and, and they argue that the, the regulators have said, well, you can't charge these fees for, un, for going into the red on, on an unarranged overdraft. So they've leveled out the field, the playing field, and said, well, everyone's going to pay 40%. But they feel that if you use the overdraft uh, just as a, as a buffer now and again, it shouldn't cost you much more because obviously 40% is an annual rate, not a daily rate. It's not, they're not loan sharks quite. Uh, so... Uh, the odd dip into it, it, it shouldn't be a problem because in the past, if you dipped into it, you, you might be charged 25 or 30 pounds fee, which they can't charge now. Uh, so, and, and they make over two and a half billion on, on overdraft fees alone. So what they're saying is if you remained in overdraft for a year, yes, it would cost you 40%, but they wouldn't suggest you do that. They would suggest if you had uh, a permanent sort of £2,000 overdraft that you should convert that to a loan at cheaper rates and then start afresh on, on a lower payment. But if you dip into an overdraft for a day or so, yes, it will cost you the equivalent of 40% per annum, but it's not going to cost you 40% a day. It's going to cost you 40% per annum on an annualised basis and there wouldn't be any fee. So they're saying it's still cheaper than it was before. Uh, for for authorised overdrafts, I'm not sure. Um, but the, the trick is to manage your money properly and that's why I talked about uh, changing your habits to change your life and, and change your habits in that you know you, you can lead a better financial life by changing those habits and it's something you need to do on a daily basis, uh, certainly on a weekly basis, just like if you wanted to get fit for the new year, it's no, there's no point in going to the gym once or twice in January where you see all the gyms are full up with people, all enthusiastic. And then by February, there's less. By March, there's less. And, and by April and May, the gym's empty again. Uh, so you can't change your, your health and your weight just on a couple of days exercise. And just the same as you can't change your finances just by having a, a once a year review. You need to change your habits, your spending habits. Look at mindful spending. Look at checking what's coming in and what's going out of your bank uh, either daily, weekly, or certainly monthly, no more than monthly, so that you know exactly where you are. You've got a picture every month of what you've spent, what you've got left. Um, is there any left? Can you cut down on some of your standing orders and, and regular payments, the direct debits? Can you can you make your life run cheaper by cutting out some of the things you don't need, like TV subscriptions, gym subscriptions that you might not be using anymore, things that you've just forgotten about. It could be something you've subscribed to and just forgotten about it. Could be on a credit card subscription, uh, so so look at those habits, spending habits, and savings habits, and also build a savings buffer for yourself so that you you don't run into this problem all the time. Um, then we looked at uh, yesterday ten quick fire money tips to beat those January blues. This is uh, so that, and I, I've got I won't go through the ten tips now, but there are ten tips you can do to to, to follow to beat those January blues because in January it's the time when it's the longest period between paydays a lot of people got paid you know a week before Christmas and they're not going to get paid till the end of January and uh, so it's a long gap there and you obviously spend more at Christmas well most people do unless you're you're a Scrooge uh, but generally people spend more at Christmas and they certainly give the, the credit cards a good old bash in and then in in the middle of January about now they're getting the the credit card bills on their doormat 
And in those tips, I talk about dealing with the debt, not just leaving the envelopes there, uh, actually open them and deal with it, deal with the problem. And it's not going to get any better by ignoring it. And then look at how you can deal with your debt. Can you look for some interest free uh, credit card deals and I, I, I mentioned Virgin there and uh, there, there was another one there it's in the, in the article anyway Virgin is one of them that offer interest free uh, periods where you can go up to 29 months without paying interest and this will give you a, a breathing space in which you could pay down some of your capital because you're not paying those hundreds of pounds a month in interest payments so, so those were a few tips on the on the quick fire tips to beat the January blues to get your your finances in order because if your finances in order your life's in order you're in order you feel happier you can move forward with things you've got the energy you're not being dragged down and weighed down by by those financial issues and also for for the self-employed or, or anybody that needs to fill in a, a tax assessment could be higher rate could be anything uh, you've got until the 31st of January to beat the the final final deadline to get your tax return in otherwise you'll be facing a, an automatic fine from HMRC, the, the, the tax people, the revenue. So get that sorted out. Don't leave it till the, the last night, the 31st of January, which in, incidentally is Brexit Day as well. That's when Britain will be leaving the European Union. And millions of, of EU migrants have, have not yet applied to stay, although two million have applied to stay and, and become uh, settled here, permanently settled. And most of those are from Poland. Then the next one along is Romanians. Then Italians are the next biggest group that have applied to, to stay. The government are making it very easy. Nobody's going to be automatically deport, deported. And I think they've got until June next year anyway. So they've got that, that leeway. So I think the UK government is being very fair and giving you lots of time, reducing fees. Yes, there's paperwork, but so what? Every country has paperwork. Um, they, they make it a, as easy as possible. It's obviously a cost, an enormous cost as well uh, to get these sort of things done. So they've got to charge some sort of fees. They, they're not just sitting there for nothing. They have to charge something, but they're not charging as much as they, they are charging for non-EU migrants. Um, other things to look at over the, the last um, week or so, the Trump, Donald Trump has agreed the China trade deal, which has been dogging the economies of the world, there's this sort of trade war. So they've got a deal agreed now, but I believe there's some more negotiation to go. But they've definitely got a better deal for America. He's the only one standing up to China, for whatever you say about him. But unfortunately, the deal was announced on the same day that the Democrats decided to start the impeachment trial against him uh, because they're hoping to get him removed, which they, it will not happen because in, in the Senate, there's a, a majority of re Republicans and, and Trump's a Republican, so they're not going to get him removed. And it looks like he could win a second term in the election year. Um, I talked about uh, so, so I talked about the the banks and the, the ten tips. Um, looking back at the, uh, we had some other news this week about shops, for instance, that, that that the the Christmas period was very poor in terms of shopping in the high street. A lot of people bought stuff online, but but the spending was not as high as it has been in previous years, and footfall in shops in the high street is down 20% in the last 10 years. Uh, 28,000 shops are empty and it, and it follows a 30 year decline of the high street. When I say the high street, I'm not talking about the big shopping malls. I'm talking about the old fashioned high street with the, the Woolworths and the Debenhams and the bakers and the butchers and the candlestick makers and all that sort of stuff in the high street. Well, they're suffering because of these, first of all, because of these out of town glitzy shopping centers with free parking and lots of nice coffee places and you can go there and do all your shopping do everything in one hit uh, that's that's hit shops over the last 30 years and now of course we've got the online retailers who are hitting the shops and a lot of shops feel aggrieved because they say they're paying high rents in fact the, the and, and and if you include the rent and then the rates the business rates that that's quite a big whammy and you know even in a small shop you might need 50,000 a year just to open the doors so uh, what they're saying is that rates should be reduced because they're paying rates based on the value of the, the property, which could be higher than the, the, the value per square foot of an out of town retail park or certainly a warehouse. Um, and, and they feel that they're, they're paying more uh, rates per square foot than some of the huge retailers in these big out of town retail parks. So, so they want more of a level, play, level playing field. And, uh, you know, I certainly don't want to see the high street die. And we talked about this before. If you don't use these shops, you're going to lose these shops. 
And it is nice to go down to your local shops, just take a walk or a drive or take a bus or a train and just walk around in normal streets rather than in these indoor you know, places where, you know, you're walking for miles and miles, bumping into people, noisy kids. You know, maybe just go to a a, a shop in the high street before they, they disappear. Debenhams have been closing down stores, started closing down stores this week, and other stores in the last year have just disappeared. Um, you know, lots of House of Fraser shops are closed, Maplins and, and lots of other uh, smaller retailers have closed down in the last year. So I like to see that reversed, hopefully. Uh, we, we, we hope we'll, we'll see a, a Boris bounce, but it hasn't affected the Christmas shopping as yet. Uh, and in fact, mortgages, the demand for mortgages were down in the last quarter. So we'll have to see how that goes in the next quarter and to see if this, this Boris bounce really does work or, or whether it will just be a short term thing. And then we're, we're back to other um, potential recessionary uh, uh, conditions where you know you see banks still printing money central banks are still using quantitative easing to print money they say that interest rates in the UK may come down just when everyone thought they were going up last year and and everyone including me fixed mortgages over a five year period because we thought interest rates were going to go up now they look like they're going to come down uh, because uh, you know um, they want to stimulate the economy and inflation is quite low but we'll have to see they may come down in the short term we, we don't know we'll have to see what the bank of england does now remember that in the last 11 years since 2010 we've had an 11 year what they call a bull run where the market is going up the stock market is going up 11 year bull run uh, certainly in america and, and prices are very high some people are saying it's due for a correction other people say no there's still room to move up um, the other thing is that we, we see that, um, uh, that there was no real big recession in the last decade, which is unusual for a decade. Normally in every decade you have one big crash, market crash, a big recession, like in 2008, um, you know, 87, in the 70s there were a few, uh, in, in, you know, so, so there's always one or two. The nine, in the end of the 90s there was one. But in, in this decade, in the 2010 to 2020, there's no big crash or recession. So every 10 years or so, there is a crash or recession, certainly on the stock market. So we'll have to see what happens uh, after that. We'll have to see what happens, because even though we're leaving the EU and everyone should be happy and the, and, and the Boris bounce and all that sort of stuff and, and this government spending that will eventually come out and trickle down to the economy, you know, we're still going to have trade negotiations with the EU. We're still going to have issues and problems that we normally have and and people still are unable to afford properties because they're, they're just priced too high so something has to give somewhere so let's see what happens so so that's all for now thanks for listening it's been charles kelly author of yes money can buy happiness he used to be a financial advisor was in financial services for 25 years and uh, i'm not no longer practicing as a financial advisor but i i, I do see the same problems of people not saving, not saving for their pension, spending money on credit cards and, and living their life in debt. And the money that they should be putting aside each month, that, that bit of spare money, is really been eaten up by credit card companies uh, just taking their money and, and, and that they can spend years like that. Uh, so that's what I'm saying and in the quick fire tips and, and the change your habits, change your life post this week. Have a look at them. They're on my website, moneytipsdaily.com, or you can check back on my Facebook pages. So thanks for listening. This is Charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate, and enjoy more money. Have a great weekend and good night.